for our consideration this morning, once again, from 1 John chapter 2. We know that we have come to know him if we obey his commands. The man who says, I know him, but does not do what he commands is a liar, and the truth is not in him. But if anyone obeys his word, God's love is truly made complete in him. I realize that I have not made you awkwardly raise your hand for anything in a while, and I I think we're overdue, so I just thought, I like it when I make you do uncomfortable things that you don't like. So I've got a couple of questions, and if they apply to you, I would like you to raise your hand. If you love chocolate, please raise your hand. That's a lot of you. But I'm not sure that I believe you. I know you say you love chocolate, but what you really mean is, I like chocolate. I really enjoy chocolate, but if you loved chocolate, you would eat nothing but chocolate. And if I offered you a dessert that didn't have chocolate in it, you would refuse because you were that loyal to chocolate. You would say, I don't want any peanut butter, I don't want vanilla, I don't want any cinnamon, I only want chocolate. I want the best chocolate that I can possibly buy, so I'm not gonna buy Hershey's candy bars because those are like fake chocolate, I don't even know what's in them. I'm gonna buy real chocolate. I want that 75%, I want that 85%, that stuff that's so bitter, you can't even enjoy it anymore. That's the kind of chocolate, and I'm not sure that when you raised your hand, that's really what you meant. All right, I got another one. Raise your hand if you love dogs. Not as many people, but a lot of you love dogs. But what I think you actually meant to say was, I like dogs, or I really like dogs. Not I love dogs, because if you really loved dogs, like loved dogs, you would never pet any other animal. You wouldn't pet a goat, you wouldn't pet a cat, you wouldn't get a fish to take care of, because if you had a fish, that would take you away from caring for your dog and loving your dog and loving your neighbor's dog that you feed over the fence. If you really love dogs, all capital letters, love, you wouldn't have any other pets because you'd be so dedicated to your dog, that's all you would think about, that's all you would do, you wouldn't even have hobbies. You would just love your dog. And I'm not sure that that's exactly what you meant when you raised your hand and said that you love dogs. I got one more. Raise your hand if you love or loved your parents. It's a lot of people. But I'm not sure that all of you really love your parents. Maybe you liked your parents. Maybe you got along with your parents. Maybe you thought it was cool that they put a roof over your head and put food on the table and clothed you and put you through education and took you to the hospital, you know, things like that. But if you really loved your parents, you would have done what they told you to do all the time, first time, without complaining, And I know you didn't do that, okay? But if you really loved, all capital letters, loved your parents, wouldn't you have done that? Not just to say, I like my parents, or I I really like my parents, or I'm happy that I'm in their house, but I love my parents, I'm going to obey them first time, right away, without complaining, no questions asked. And that distinction is basically what we're talking about in 1st John chapter 2 because all of us know God but John says if we really knew God we would do what he said if we really understood the love of God and how much he cares about us we we would do the what he said the first time without complaining no questions asked but that doesn't really describe us so maybe we don't know God as well as we think we do and 1 John was written near the very end of Bible books being written. And already, when John wrote this, which was about 60 years after Jesus died and then rose and went to heaven, already, 
Before the year 100, already there were different false teachings that were creeping into the church. There were heresies that were coming in. And John is trying to address them throughout this letter, throughout 1 John. And here were two of the things that people were saying. One of them was, maybe God didn't really come as a man and he was just a spirit. So we see that the physical world and it's full of sin and, and bad things. Bad things happen in the physical world. God must surely exist above that. So the teaching that Jesus became a true man and came to earth and was among us, well, we don't like that. That doesn't fit within the way that we understand the world. So Jesus can't have been true man. God can't have come to be here. And this is true knowledge to understand this. And so if you read through 1 John over and over again, the apostle John is pointing out Jesus was here. We saw him with our eyes. We touched him with our hands. He was here. We understand what he tells us to do. And that makes a difference in our lives. You can't say that you have bonus information about God that nobody else has and then have that not even affect you. John says, I saw Jesus. He, he taught me and that affects my life. And there's another teaching that John was trying to confront and that's the idea that maybe Jesus isn't God and maybe he was just a man and maybe he didn't really die for our sins but he was just somebody who died. And John doesn't like that either, and neither do I, and neither should you. So if you read through 1 John over and over again, you'll hear about John saying, he died for us, he came in the flesh, and anybody who disagrees with that isn't even really a Christian, because that's a basic thing for us to understand as believers. So John says, Jesus came in the flesh, he really did live and die among us, and his teachings should impact our life And he says, we know that we have come to know him if we obey his commands. So if we know God, that's going to affect the way that we behave. Not just that it's going to affect the way that we behave, but we will obey what he has commanded us. First time, no questions asked. Because if Jesus really is the all-powerful God who left heaven and came to earth to live among people and then died for them and forgave them. And somebody heard about that? Wouldn't that affect their life? Wouldn't that change the way that they thought about all of these commands from the Bible as though they weren't burdensome, but they were an opportunity to give back to the God who gave so much to us We can't say that we know God and then not do what he commands. So John starts out and his words convict us and they tell us, even though we think we know God, we must not know him as much as we thought. And then John's words tell us something else. The man who says, I know him, but does not do what he commands is a liar and the truth is not in him. So yeah, you can say, I know God. I received a Christian education. I grew up in the church. I went through the catechism. I was confirmed. I was baptized. I took communion. I did everything. Oh, did you forget about loving your neighbor? That's what John goes on to talk about later. Loving your neighbor. Do you forget about that? Loving fellow believers? You can't say, I know God and I know know his commands and then just not do it. That doesn't make any sense. You can't say, I know God and then ignore what he had to say. You're lying to yourself. John's words tell us, number one, you don't know God as well as you thought you did. Number two, you are a liar. And they tell us a third thing, too. Verse 6 says, whoever claims to live in him must walk as Jesus did. Whoever claims to live in him. We talk about God living in us, but here this is talking about living in God, being close to him, having fellowship with him. That's something that we spent the last two Sundays talking about in Bible class, about having fellowship with somebody, about agreeing with them, 
about walking together. And John says, if you're going to claim to be in Christ, to have fellowship just with him, forget about other believers, okay? What about your relationship with God? Do you have fellowship with him? Are you close with him? If you aren't walking the way that Jesus walked, you don't have fellowship with Jesus. And we try, and we do our best. But we have to admit, I, we haven't done this perfectly either. We haven't walked the same way that Jesus walked. We haven't always confronted sin with the same boldness, but in the same breath, shown mercy to those who asked for forgiveness. We haven't walked the way Jesus walked much at all. And so John's words tell us, you don't know God as well as you thought you did. You are a liar, and you don't really have fellowship with Jesus. And that's tough to hear. But, going back to my illustration at the beginning, if you really love chocolate, you wouldn't eat anything but chocolate. If you really love dogs, you would only care for dogs and you wouldn't care for any other animals. If you really love your parents, you would have obeyed what they said right away because you recognized that they loved you. But God loves you way more than your parents. God has done everything for you. And if you really understood that love, you would obey him right away. But we don't. John says in verse 7 that this isn't a new command that he's writing. He's, he's telling people an old command. Love your neighbor as yourself. This is something that people understood even going back to the Old Testament. Something God told his people to do. Love your neighbor as yourself. Love your God with all your heart and soul and mind and strength. That summarizes the commandments. But John says that this is new. I am writing you a new command, he says in verse 8. The old command is the message you've heard, but this is new. There is something new about this command. And if you compare this to what we see in the Gospel of John, because all of John's writings are all connected, if you compare this to what we see in the Gospel of John, Jesus says, I'm going to give you a new command. Love one another. It's not new. God's people have been told to love each other since the very beginning. But Jesus said, this is new because I want you to love one another as I have loved you. And that's what makes it new. We can hear about God's love. We can look at the ways that God preserved his people in the Old Testament, the way that he forgave them over and over and over again. But Jesus says, I'm going to show you something new. I'm going to show you something that you've never heard of before. And Jesus lived and died for sinful people. He reached out his arms to them and he said, Jerusalem, I want to gather you like a hen gathers her chicks under her wings, but you were not willing. And after he said that, he died for them anyway. So that they could be forgiven. Even though they wouldn't listen to him, even though they rejected him, he died to forgive them anyway. And John's words here convict us of our sin. But at the same time, they point us to the new command that Jesus gave us. And even in Jesus' command, we see his love. Love one another as I have loved you, as I am loving you, as I have forgiven your sin day after day, as I died on the cross to wash all of your sins away, as I still hear your prayers, even for the times that you forgot to pray for me or prayed for the wrong thing, I still provide it for you. John says this is a new command, and its truth is seen in him. Surely we can see God's love in Jesus, but his truth is also seen in us because the darkness is passing and the true light is already shining. God makes a change in us right away. As he puts faith in our hearts, he helps us to understand that we're forgiven through Jesus. But the process of loving our neighbors, of loving our fellow believers, that's one that takes more time. But it's still something that God wants us to do. John goes on. 
And these words are meant for us to understand how we've fallen short, but also to correct our behavior in the future. Anyone who claims to be in the light but hates his brother is still in the darkness. Whoever loves his brother lives in the light. John's talking about living in love, living in light. We're living in love if we understand the love that God had for us and we try to reflect that to others. We're living in light if we move out of the darkness that we want to live in. It's fun for us, because of our sinful nature, to go and hide in a corner, to tear people down, to gossip about them, to whittle the church down until we're the only ones who belong in it anymore. Did you hear what she said? Did you see what he did? I wouldn't say something like that. I wouldn't even think it. I belong in the church. Maybe they don't. John tells us to love our fellow believers. That's what he, he, he means when he says brother. And some newer translations say brother or sister for this section, because he's, he's talking about believers, not just your family. Although, yes, you should love the people in your family. You should love your parents. You should love your siblings. But John's primarily talking about the way that we interact with other believers. You can't say, I know Jesus, I love Jesus, but I hate these other Christians. You can say people are misguided, you can say they're sinful, and John already told us we were sinful, but you can't say that I hate them. You have to show love to them. You have to give them the same kind of mercy that God has given to you. You have to be forgiving over and over again. And that's not easy. But John says anybody who claims to be in the light must walk and live as Jesus did. And that's what Jesus did. Jesus forgave you. Jesus forgave the person sitting next to you and behind you and in front of you. Jesus loved people who didn't love him back. And if you're going to say, I know Jesus, that's what he wants you to do too. That's what living in love is all about. Forgiving the unforgivable. Having mercy to those who don't deserve it. Showing grace in the same kind of way that God showed it to you. That doesn't describe our love. It doesn't describe our love for anything, really. But it does describe God's love for us. And God's wish for us, God's intent, is that we would hear about this more and more and continue to be transformed so that the darkness will continue to pass away and that God's light might be shown to others through us. God's light has appeared and God loves us more than anything. Amen.